Hey guys, welcome back to some more Banjo-Kazooie. Now we're done with Bubble Gloop, let's go ahead and take our gator friend here into the back section. I'm a gator. I can hover momentarily in the air while I'll keep spamming the chomp button. He's hungry. Yeah, I mean, hey, can you blame him? He hasn't really had anything to eat here, so... I, I have. What do you mean? He had he had the yumblins or whatever the the that he did with Mr. Vile last episode. Yeah, but he doesn't have anything to eat in the frozen tundra. Well, I guess I guess the the yumblies or whatever they're called are are gonna be hibernating during the winter. So I guess you're right. Yeah. Well, not just that, but he, he's not going back anytime soon. So for him, he's a uh, okay food. And we found Cheeto again. Well, this is actually the first time we've ever found Cheeto. So, uh, you're taking a little ahead here. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the first time we found Cheeto. So, there are three different Cheeto locations in this game. Every time you find this book, he's going to give you a new cheat code. So, this is really your only way you're going to be getting cheats in this game. There are plenty of other cheat codes you can use in Banjo-Kazooie, but the Cheeto cheats here, these are the only ones you're allowed to use because any other cheats will disable saving on the 360 version. And if you enter too many in the N64 version, Grunty will delete your save file. I wouldn't really call these cheats. These are upgrades. It's permanent upgrades. Yeah. No. What Cheeto is giving you that? Is... They're called cheats because they even named the character Cheat O. <laughs> like a like a Cheeto puff. Ch uh, chips. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> you got Cheeto puffs. Yeah, the picture of a uh, just uh, a picture of Cheeto bag with uh, googly eyes added to it. Yeah. Yeah, Cheeto. <laughs> the Chester Cheeto would be really upset about that. Yeah. Just a bit. Because infringing copyright. You boy, you really love spamming that ch that chomp button, don't you? What else do you do to get back? It's it's a long way back. How to do it? You could just walk like a normal person instead of going. Nom, 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 nom. He's hungry. It's faster. It's the only character with an attack. You gotta take advantage of it. Speaking of attacking, hey buddy. That guy was not waiting for you. <laughs> what kind of bullshit is this? He's just waiting for me to transform, waiting for my animation in, and then you'll attack me, huh? Nah, he wouldn't even wait for that. He's like, you're gonna transform, I'm gonna take the opportunity. You're one of those guys uh, that that just, uh... Are you trying... Wait. Are you trying to get this early? Yeah, I might as well. I'm in the same room as the Jiggy. I want the Jiggy now. So you're supposed to go into another room and fall back into this one, or you just climb on Grunny's arm and get the Jiggy. That's in her stomach for some reason? I was going to say, man, that was an easier way later, but I guess it's just like, nah, I'm here. I better get it now. So now we're back in Treasure Trove Coast, the time to enter in that cheat. So uh, you're going to be back here a lot in Banjo-Kazooie for cheat codes. That's blue eggs. Doubles your egg count to 200. The lousy chief for extra eggs won't help barren bird chicken legs. Hey, at least she rhymed. Well, yeah. She stopped rhyming in Tui, so. Yeah, well, her sisters pretty much told her, hey, stop that. But then, uh, her sisters also rhyme at times, so why did they have a problem with it? Going wise, it was a little stupid. They're hypocrites, that's what it is. Yep. Now, look, Banjo, I know we just opened a door, but you have to dance every time you open a freaking door. He likes celebrating. Don't you, every time you open the mind, bathroom door, do uh, a open, dance. Open, open, the, uh, open the garage door with your keys and be like, then it's like, oh, I gotta do my cheeky dance. <laughs> no, it's more like going to the bathroom, just opening the door, doing the dance. Just go to the bathroom. Okay. Oh, we uh we linked up a a pot. Yeah. Now we can finally use a shortcut in this game. It takes a while until you get a shortcut, but when you finally get it, they're pretty useful. I except one chain of pots. There's one chain of pots that I find so useless in this game, especially in this version with how the loading times got increased or decreased, I should say. 
Oh, I guess we're just gonna go ahead and unlock both uh, Gobi Valley and Freeze Easy Peak this episode. Yeah, because th there's an issue with both of these levels. Both of them have one Jiggy that needs a power from the other one. So in order to 100% Gobi's Valley, you need something for Freeze Easy Peak. In order to 100% Freeze Easy Peak, you need something for Gobi's Valley. So you have to choose one of these to pop inside of and either fully complete up to a certain point or get the power you need for the other world. And there's no way around this. You have to backtrack for one Jiggy at the very least in this game. So I'm opting to pop into Gobi first and then we're going to go to Freeze Easy Peak after we get the power here. Yeah, this is how you actually go down into the previous room with the Grunty statue. You're supposed to jump in this spot. You gotta use the shock pad to do it. That shock pad would be useful for something else later, too. <laughs> Since we already did it, we don't need to worry about it. Are you trying to do it at the beat of the song? No, I just want to go. Go, because here we go. It almost made it sound like you were trying to do it at the beat of the song. Going to Gobi's first. We're going out of order for just one freaking power up. Yeah, I always like popping in Gobi's Valley real quick to get a power, because I like completing the game in set order. So since this is World 6, I'd like to complete World 5 or World 6. So it kind of feels weird to have to pop in here, get the running shoes, and then just immediately leave. But that's just how I play. Don't collect anything. Just don't. Power only. We're only here for a moment. Yeah, so this here is the one thing we need to come into this world for, the running shoes. Wearing these allows you to move at a much faster pace. And there's certain jiggies that require these in order to actually make it to certain objectives in time or to do certain things. Yeah, and that's the last one of the game. No, there's still one more and it's in Freeze Easy. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, remember, you need the power from Freeze Easy to complete this world and to complete... Freeze easy, you need to power from here. The way I play, it's always the last one. So, my bad. I'm sorry. I forgot. Hi, Jinjo, we won't get you. You're just gonna be stuck on that forever. Yeah. Wait your turn. <laughs> Hi, Brentelda. Best friend at which school was Awful Fatty Hattie. That's kind of mean. Yeah, I mean, she's mean. Warty Girls Weekly Magazine. Oh, I call I called Brentilda Brindle Floss by accident. My bad. <laughs> and that's an insult. That's an insult to Brindle Floss. <laughs> Does he look this this pale and green? Does he look like Shrek, but in a tutu? <laughs> <laughs> Does he look like Shrek? Well, apparently Shrek is God, so... According to the internet, yes. Oh. Why? I don't know. Became such a meme, he's a god. I mean, they have that one that one scene from like, think, think it's like Shrek 2, where his hand is glowing. <laughs> and that's become a meme. I can't remember which one it was. You're unlocking this one too? No, you have you only have 400. Yeah, I can't really... Well, yeah, I can't really go in there if I want to for that reason, but I'm mainly just coming up here for two things. One is a pot. Well, what the heck? Um, well, uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting in that early, but obviously when you fall in a pot when it's not active, it just spits you out. And then I came here for another Brentelda. <laughs> Give me more facts. Disgusting Brentelda has red bagels for breakfast. Ew. <laughs> She usually has maggot pie for dinner. Yuck. He just likes rats. Everything is rat related for her. I want to know what happened to this sister in Tui. She never appeared, did she? No, she was kind of forgotten about. Just like Tootie. At least Tootie got a reference in. Banjo Tui compared to Brentilda. <laughs> Brentilda got nothing. Heck, Dingbot came back. You know, the character that was in the intro and then the ending. That's it. He comes back. A little weird. By the way, the laziest father in existence is right here. Yep. 
I hate Boggy. Oh, he's worse in the sequel. The wife has to do all the work. Boggy, you're horrible. Always will be. So over here is our final move in the game. After this, there'll be nothing else left to collect, in terms of moves at least. Aerial action. Beat bomb! Yeah, after you play Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie like I did back-to-back, -back, you realize that the Beak Bomb in this game is really bad, and they fix it beyond belief in the sequel. You can't really control where you're going once you activate Beak Bomb in this game, and you have to keep on pressing the button to keep on going in a certain direction, too. In the sequel, you can control where you're going, and you can also hold the button to keep on using Beak Bomb. Though, this got fixed in the later game, luckily. In this game, it's not bad, but it's kind of a risky thing to use. You really just use Beak Palm when you have to, the, the first game here. Gotta help the Twinklies. Yeah, so just want to get home, but they can't because people want to eat them. You hear when that happens? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just walking down the street. All of a sudden, giant crocodile comes over and eats your face. Now, I don't believe it's possible to do this in the 360 version, but in the N64 version, you can just get rid of one of these munchers and then go off screen because there's no more munchers on the screen. The Twinklies can just go through the tree and not get eaten because if you're not looking at these munchers, they won't respawn. They need to be on the camera to show up. But because this version is in widescreen, I don't believe that works here. <laughs> Curse you 16 by 9! I think you were trying to... No, you just... You, you had enough. Never mind. Yeah, when, once you get 10 over, you don't have to worry about getting any more. Just gonna move on. You don't care what happens to their brothers? Oh, no, that one last one made it. He, he's fine. I think only one or two got eaten. That was it. Yeah. Usually you have, like, one eaten in the very beginning because there's not enough reaction time to take care of the first muncher. But then that's pretty much it. The rest, you can, if you keep up a good pattern, then you can just take them all out in a good rhythm. Um, I learned something in uh, Banjo-Kazooie just the other day um, that I didn't know before, and you probably know this, Lester, but did you know that the, the snowmen that are uh, playing their snowballs there, um, if you actually claw their attacks while their snowballs are coming at you, you can break the snowball and a honeycomb piece will come out. Really? I didn't know a honeycomb came out. I never tried that. Yeah. The honeycomb piece um, comes out, and uh, you can spawn like ten of them there at once. That seems to be the only way, then, in this game to get an infinite supply of honeycombs. Did he just poop that out? Yep. Might want to go wash that one first. Yeah, that was a really bad spot to end on a Beak Bomb. This is what I was talking about earlier, where the Beak Bomb in this game isn't that great. It shot me straight upwards after I hit the last button. It's not supposed to do that. I clipped it at a bad angle, and I can't control Beak Bomb after I activate it. Oh, I kind of had to deal with it. Speaking of Beak Bombing, got to Beak Bomb these guys now. Yeah, get like right in front of them. Yeah, it's kind of awkward to line this up. Go uh -huh. But yeah, if you, uh... If you, uh... Claw... The, the, the simple, the swipe attack... With, uh... On, when their snowball's about to hit you... You'll break the snowball and a honeycomb piece will come out. So... If you are, like, in desperate need of health... That's one way you can get it. But I didn't know about that until the other day after I watched a video. I was like, oh, I guess uh, that was something I didn't know about. I mean, nothing really tells you that you, you will get health from that. And it's not the best idea just to attack an enemy attack like that. So it is kind of a thing I wouldn't think of doing at first. <laughs> Duh. I love whenever you, you, uh, you bonk your head against them.
That one in particular you need to hit if you want a honeycomb piece, but we have to kill all these snowmen for another jiggy. Yeah, because these are like the most, honestly, these are like the most annoying enemy in the game. Yeah, well, it's because they can snipe you from like halfway across the map. That doesn't help. So I just like taking these guys out pretty early on. So now the rest of the level, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I, I don't like that. They're the worst enemy in the game for me. The freaking snow land. You're just leaving everything around. You're not going to collect anything. You're just going to activate everything. Well, I want to get to the top right away because I want to also get this stuff all collected on this long scarf. Because this stuff, if you don't take this map, is very easy to forget about. Yeah. There's a lot here, too. It's like a good chunk of your notes are just on the scarf path. Looks like someone mopped up Jinjo today. <laughs> nice camera. Nice ground pound. Not classic N64 camera work, yes. Oh no. This is why we killed the snowmen. So now I can get back up there without someone throwing a snowball at me. It's a good thing you're doing that ground pound tactic with with um or the yeah, with falling because man, that's such a useful thing. Yeah, if I wasn't doing that a lot, there'd be more deaths than you would imagine. Because fall damage in this game is insane. Like, you just fall from the very top with full health, with all the health in the game, and that could still easily kill you. Like, fall damage in this game is one of the most unforgiving things. No, a present. Take me to a sad child. We haven't found the sad child, but we found the horrible father figure. <laughs> I know what Kazooie would be thinking. Sad child. I like free things. I'm very sad child. I like free thing. Give me free thing. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me now. That's pretty much all the stuff on the very top of Freeze Easy. So luckily fall damage now is not going to be much of a concern. I like how you're breaking those ice cube enemies. <laughs> really good way to break the ice with them. Oh, look, that, that pun was so bad, it, it made Boggy throw up a jiggy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, my sled. I was going to say, like, this whole thing of him riding the sled down the hill, then landing on his stomach like that, how is he not dead? Yeah, that is the better question. That is a really sturdy sled, if you want to be honest. That should not have survived either. Yeah. Must be made of some premium wood. Ecom Oakum. Climbing these houses. I wonder who lives in these houses. We left on the lights. It's daytime. Turn them off, guys. You waste electricity doing that. You know, I'm, what is with these N64 games? I just now realized. What is with these N64 just not carrying over your lives whenever you turn the game off? Yeah, I kind of wish that wouldn't be an issue. 